Hi everyone, my name is Pradyum Kejriwal and today we'll discuss the solution to the very last problem from the CP sheet by TLE eliminators under the rating of 1400. Okay, so let's begin. I'll open the CP sheet and here you can see I have a clickable link to my problem. So I'll open it. Alright, so the problem is called mass mock and ACM. A sequence of L integers b1, b2 up to bl is called good if each number divides by the next number in the sequence. More formally, b of i is a factor of b of i plus 1 for all i. Given n and k, find the number of good sequences of length k. As the answer can be large, printed model 10 to the power 9 plus 7. Okay, so the problem is pretty uh, straightforward. It is saying that we are given two integers n and k and we have to print the number of arrays a such that its length is k so a1 a2 up to a k and each ai should be between 1 to n right and also uh, it should be a good array so what is a good array good array means that for all indexes i, ai should be a factor of a i plus 1. Okay, so this is your problem. You have to count the number of such arrays given n and k. Right? So let's look at samples. So in the samples, we have um, the first sample is 3, 2. So um, 3, 2 means that our n is equal to 3 and k is equal to 2. So that means we have basically uh, 3 as our element limit and 2 is the length. So we have total 9 possible arrays of this type but out of those 9 some of them might be good and some of them might be not good. So let's just count them one by one. So is 1 comma 1 um, a good array? It is good array because this 1 is a factor of this 1. Right. Then is 1 comma 2 a good array? Yes, it is because 1 is a factor of 2. Then is 1 comma 3 a good array? Yes, it is similarly. Then is 2 comma 1 a good array? No, because 2 is not a factor of 1. Then is 2 comma 2 a good array? Yes. Then is 2 comma 3? No, because 2 is not a factor of 3. Then um, is 3 comma 1 a good array? No, it is not. Then is 3 comma 2 a good array? No, it is not. And is 3 comma 3 a good array yes it is because 3 is a factor of 3 right so in total um, we have 5 good arrays okay so therefore the answer is 5 all right and the constraints on n and k are that they are bit from 1 to 2000 the n and k both are from 1 up to 2000 and as you know that in one test we are allowed 1e8 operations per second so um, we can effectively maybe we will pass o of n square or we can pass o of n into k or o of k square also or any combination also like o of n square plus nk or something so this will pass and what will not pass is cubic terms like o of n cube or o of n square k and so on so this will not pass and but these will pass right so now at this point you may want to pause the video and try the problem for yourself okay so at this point i'm assuming that you have tried the problem by yourself and you want to know the solution now know the solution now okay so how do you actually solve this thing to think about that Let's try to construct an array of length k. Like, let's try to think that we want to construct or we want to count the number of arrays of length k, right? Which are good. So, length k, this is length k. Okay. And the conditions are that all the elements should be from 1 to n. That is fine. And the other condition is that a of i should be divisible by a of i plus 1 right 
So that means that this element should be dissolved as this element. So kind of like this. Then this element should be dissolved by this, this element. Then this should be by this, and so on. So um, your condition is like this. So now, actually, what you can observe, if that if you want to make a k length good array, all right, like if this array of length k is good, right, then definitely I can say that this array of length k minus one. Actually, this is also good. Why? Because this condition is satisfied for all of these indices, right? And for this one as well. So, if you just look at this k minus one array, the condition is satisfied for that one as well, right? So that's why, if we want to construct a k length array, which is good, then we can start with a k minus one length array. Okay, like we can start with this k minus one length good array, and we can simply append an element to its end, right? And that element should be between one to n. And there is one more condition that it should be a multiple of this, or this should be a factor of this, right? So I can write this condition as one that uh, a of One to k minus one, one to k minus one should be good. Like for a of one to k should to be good. First of all, a of one to k minus one should be good, and second of all, this a of k minus one should be a factor of a of k, right? And also a of k should be less than equal to n. So these are the three conditions. Which determine that whether my array is good or not. So, like in like the first condition is actually a recursive condition. Like for a of one to k to, to be good, a of one to k minus one should be good. And how do we check that? We'll check with a of one to k minus two and so on. So essentially, what I have done is that I have broken down my problem into a smaller sub problem, like the length k problem. I have broken down into a length k minus one problem, so we can try to use the idea of DP here. DP means like we can store our answer for different different values of k, that is for different different lengths. And if we know the answer to a smaller length, then we can probably determine the answer for our current length. But there is one more condition that this a of k minus one should be a factor of a of k, right? So to handle that, what we need to do, like simply, what I'm saying is that if we want to make an array of length k, and let's say that here we want an element v, okay, if we want an element v here, then that means that this element has to be a factor of v. That's the condition. So this element has to be a factor of v, and this entire array of length k minus one has to be good. Right. So, so let's assume that we know that how many arrays, how many good arrays are there of length k minus one, which end in a certain value. Let's say u. Like, if we know that how many arrays there are which end in u and have length k minus one, then we can simply iterate over the factors of v. And add up our answer. Like, aren't you getting me? What I'm saying is, I'll give an example. Okay, like say, let's say for example, I want to make um an array of length three. Like, I want to make good arrays of length three. Like, let's say that is my test case, n equal to three and k equal to three. Right. So to make a good array of length three, I need a good array of length two. Right. And also that this element should be factor of this element. So let's say that I fix this last element as three. Then of course, this element can be either one or three because they are the factors of three, right? So I just want all the arrays which end in one or which end in three. So what arrays are there? This is the array. 
this is one of the arrays this is one of the arrays and this is one of the arrays so either i can have 113 or i can have 133 or i can have 333 so like as you can see i just appended 3 to all three of these arrays okay and that's how i can just uh, calculate my answer like if i know that the number of arrays ending in 1 like having length 2 ending in 1 is just 1 and the number of arrays ending in 3 and having length 2 are 2 so this one and this one then i will know that the number of arrays ending in 3 and having length 3 are 1 plus 2 which is 3 so like in general if i say that if i want to make an array which is good and it ends in some value v or let's say it ends in some value j and whose length is i then i can simply say that the number of arrays ending in j having length i is just the sum of the number of arrays ending in all the factors of j and having length i minus 1 so if i say that my dp of i comma j dp of i comma j is equal to the number of arrays ending in j ending in j having length i having length i then um i can say that like i can simply calculate my dp of i comma j as the summation of dp i minus 1 comma k i can have an array of i minus 1 length which ends in k where k is a factor of j so k is a factor of j so all of these possible arrays i can append j at the end of them and i will get an array of length i which ends in j right so this is your transition okay so your state is this one that dp of i j is the number of arrays ending in j having length i and the transition is that you can simply iterate over all the factors of j and add their dp of i minus 1 right so this is your entire solution and finally you want to find out the number of arrays having length k right you don't care what they end in like they can end in anything from 1 to n so finally your answer would be just dp of k comma 1 like length k ending at 1 plus length k ending at 2 and so on up to length k ending at n okay so this is your final answer this is your final answer right so that's how you can just calculate the dp and you might be asking that how much time does it take to build this dp so before ask, answering that i'll first show you the code because that will make it a bit easier to understand okay so here's the code so in my function i have taken the input like uh, int nk c in nk factors of n plus 1 so i have a vector of vector or a vector vect array of vector so which is like storing like factors of i is storing all of the factors of i in a list so i have pre computed all of my factors of i because i want to iterate over them right i want to iterate over all the factors of j so i am just pre computing them so like for int i equal to 1 i less than equal to 1 i plus plus so in this loop i am uh, computing the factors of i like i am finding out all of the factors of i and i can do that in square root of i like i can just iterate from j equal to 1 up to j equal to root square root of i right so if if i mod j equal to 0 that is j is a factor of i then i'll push it back so factors of i dot push back j and so of course if j is a factor of i then i upon j is a factor of i so i'll push back i by j also into factors of i provided that it is not equal to j already like provided that j is not equal to square root of i so let's say for example if we have i equal to 
then for j equals to 2 we only need to insert two ones right so that's why i'm checking that if i by j is not equal to j then only i'll put i by j okay then i have a dp like uh, i'll have a dp of k plus 1 n plus 1 size where dp of ij is the number of good arrays of length i ending in j right so um, i have like okay so the base case is that all of the arrays of length 1 are good right so the number of arrays having length 1 and ending in i that just one right that's just the array i cool so that's the base case and now we iterate from the length equal to 2 up to length equal to k and for all the ending elements like for j equal to 1 j less than equal to 1 j plus plus i'll initialize dp ij to 0 and then i'll iterate over all the factors of j and i'll just add this dp of i minus 1 comma x to my dp of ij so dp of ij plus equals to dp of i minus 1 comma x and i'll just take the mod of course so this is what your transition is and finally your answer would be just the uh, sum of dp of k comma i for i equal to 1 to n right so you just print the answer so now what about this approach is time complexity okay so first of all the pre-computation it just takes o of square root of n like this is o of n and this uh, inner loop is square root of n so this is n root n right this is this part is n root n the pre-computation and your dp part this is just o of n right so o of n like doesn't really matter right and in this part this is the main part right so your this is your o of k this is o of n and this is number of factors of j so how, what is that actually so you should remember this fact that the number of factors of a number let's say j the number of factors of j is approximately like always less than or equal to j to the power 1 by 3 like this is not a hard and fast limit but like it's approximately very good approximation okay so you can use that so essentially since my j can be up to n i can say that this is o of n to the power 1 by 3 o of n to the power 1 by 3 right so this entire block is k into n into n to the power 1 by 3 okay so my time complexity final is just o of n root n for the pre-computation this one and for this thing it is um n k into n to the power 1 by 3 and if you calculate this value it will turn out to be approximately 10 to the power 7 and that's why it will pass and the space complexity sc is just o of n into k because we are um, just storing this dp of n into k size all right so that's your entire solution of how to solve this problem and i hope you understood and thanks for watching bye bye <laughs>